Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how uh, one way to perform end-to-end -end testing. Uh, so end-to-end -end testing is the kind of testing you probably want to perform uh, before you deploy it to a production release. Um, what you're doing there is you're trying to get as close to the actual production conditions as possible uh, just to make sure that everything is working from the beginning to the end. You may have some other tests, probably should have tests in terms of unit tests for um, parts of your Lambda function. But for this video, I'm just going to be showing you an end-to-end -end test and um, one way to actually create it. So you'll see here that within this Lambda function, hello world, I have a folder called test. This is kind of a um, convention that you should follow. And then within that, I have a single test that maps to my actual function and I add test to the file name. So you see here, the function I'm testing is lambda.js, so I call the test lambda.test.js. And you see here is the test. Um, the first thing I wanna point out is how I'm creating the link to the gateway, the AWS gateway that gets created when you actually deploy your um, AWS function. So when you do deploy your AWS function, what you're going to create automatically is this file called claudia.json. So you're gonna see that file sitting there. It has a bunch of variables and um, these variables can be extracted to create the URL for the thing that you wanna test. So going back to the package JSON, or to the test, you'll see that I actually require that JSON file at line three. And then here at line five, I'm creating that URL from the Claudia JSON. So I'm taking the API ID from it. Uh, and then I'm also taking the region that was used to create that function. And then you'll see here that at the very end, I have test because that is the, um, the, the deployment or the stage that I'm using to uh, deploy. That was covered in a, in a previous video. Um, and I'm using a couple of node modules to do testing. I'm using a thing called super test, and I'm also using another module called should. Um, you may have other modules that you like for testing, but for this example, these are the two modules I'm using. So here at line seven, I'm creating a, um, a server using that URL and using the module super test. And then the body of the test, I have two separate tests, one for each endpoint that's um, handled by the Lambda function. The first one is for the hello call. So here I'm um, calling it. I'm expecting the content type to be a JSON response. Um, I'm expecting it to return a status code of 200 for success. And then at this line here at 18, I'm saying the response body should equal this thing. And you can see here that um, I expect it to return back the, uh, in this particular case, it's gonna be the, the token for the test platform. Um, so it's basically just a string comparison. The second test is somewhat similar. Um, I'm testing the call endpoint that was created again. I expect a JSON re uh, body response in a 200 status code. And then I'm, call I'm making sure that the response body has each of the values that I would expect in the JSON response. So I expect a name, I expect it to equal this value. <clears throat> and then I also expect that it would have a property of version and of stage. Um, here you could also add an uh, dot equal um, check to make sure it's a particular version or a particular stage. Uh, so once you have these tests worked out, the way you call them is using one of the scripts in the package JSON file. So you see here at the very end of this script section, I have a script called test end to end. And what I'm doing here is I'm setting the version to test. So what that's going to do is it's going to make sure that the test version is the most recent version of that Lambda function. And then after the double ampersands, you can see that I'm actually, this is where I call, use Mocha to call the test. So any test files that are located in this test folder are going to be executed. Um, 
So really quickly, let me just show you the version alias part of this. So when I run the test, and again, this was covered in another video, but I just want to go back over this. What happens is you can see here that the test version is going to be the test alias or label is now going to be pointing to the most recent version, which in this particular example is three. So let's go ahead and run this test and run test colon e2e. And you can see here that the test did pass. Um, let's change this a little bit and just see if we can get it to fail so you can see what that looks like. So you can see here that a failure did occur and it kind of shows you you know, the two values, the one that's expected and the one that it actually returned. So here is a case where you'd want to, you know, resolve this before you moved it into production. Finally, I just wanted to point out again uh, the use of this environmental variable JSON file. So for this test, I had a um, test token defined here, and that was part of my test. If you look here, I'm testing that that token actually exists and is what I expected it to be. So other things that you might put in a file like this is, let's say that you have a database that is strictly used for testing and you have credentials for that. This is a kind of, um, this is the file where you put that kind of information. Um, and again, it would end up in your AWS Lambda by virtue of deploying probably dev or prod you'll notice that both of those commands include the set environment variables from JSON calls. So that's how those uh, values end up there and then they become available to your tests when you run the end-to-end -end test in um, a command like run uh, test e2e.